Hi, Terry Shanefeld for UAB School of Medicine. Case control studies are considered an efficient study design. You can get relatively good information fairly quickly and cheaply. But there are some limitations to case control studies. In this video, I'll discuss general design principles of case control studies, talk about when case control study designs are more useful than cohort studies, and also go over their limitations. So studies can be either descriptive or analytic. And analytic studies are further broken down into experimental studies like randomized control trials or observational studies like cohort, case control, and cross-sectional studies. In this video, we're going to focus on case control studies, which is a type of observational study. Now, observational studies are just that. Researchers observe participants in the study. They don't intervene in any way, unlike randomized control trials, which are experimental. The Haynes 6S hierarchy is demonstrated here, and original research studies are at the very bottom of the Haynes 6S hierarchy. And furthermore, this re primary research studies are further broken down into another hierarchy based on the risk of bias. Randomized control trials have the least risk of bias, followed by cohort studies, followed by case control studies. So the focus of this video, case control studies, is really near the bottom um, of the hierarchy of commonly used studies because it's the most prone to bias and these biases will be the focus of another video. So what is a case control study? Well a case control study is an observational study where we start with cases and controls and go backwards in time for exposure status. So a case is somebody who has the disease that we're interested in, a control is somebody who doesn't have the disease that we're interested in, but importantly could develop that disease. So it's very important that they could develop that disease, they just haven't yet. And they're always retrospective, so we start with cases and controls and we always go backwards in time to see how many people are exposed or not in each of these groups. So anytime we go backwards in time that puts us at risk of making errors or for the study being biased. And going backwards in time trying to figure out exposures requires adequate records to be available. It requires people to remember exposure status. So there's risk in this type of study of getting an errant answer. So remember, case control study starts with cases which are diseased and control patients who don't have disease goes backwards in time for exposures. Now I mentioned a control had to at least be able to develop the disease of interest. Very important. We wouldn't want to do a study uh, trying to look at the effect of hormone replacement therapy and uterine cancer and our cases are a group of women with uterine cancer and our controls are a group of men. Now these men clearly wouldn't have uterine cancer but they never could have developed it so this would be a very biased uh, study specifically selection bias. So make sure when you read these types of studies that the controls could have been a case that they had the possibility of developing disease. And the measure of association between exposure and disease in a case control study is an odds ratio. Now case control studies have certain strengths and weaknesses. Let's focus on the strengths first. Well they're good for diseases that have a very long latency and what that means is a long time to develop. So with a case control study because we start with disease right off the bat time has gone by. We don't have to wait for a disease to develop. It's also good for rare diseases again for this same reason since we start with disease or our cases even if something's very rare we can capture and grab all those patients who have that disease right up front. It's also very good to determine all the possible things that could have potentially caused that disease because we're going backwards in time and looking for exposures. We can measure as many different exposures as we want. And because everything's already happened, happened patients already have disease, exposures already happened, you can get much faster uh, results doing a case control study. Now there are some limitations. Um, case control studies cannot establish risk dire directly. So risk is the incidence of developing new disease. And there is no new disease in a case control study. It's already happened. We artificially sort of pick the number of cases and controls, so we can't really determine the risk directly. We only can study one disease also. So we can't study multiple different diseases and like we could in a cohort study. And as I mentioned earlier, this study design is much more prone to bias, much more prone to systematic errors because of that going retrospectively and mainly also because of selecting cases and controls. I hope this video has helped you understand more about case control study design. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.